Good morning, boys and girls. Thank you for joining me again for another day with Kindergarten with Grandma or with Mrs. Nielsen. I'm so glad you've joined. And let's start our day with our good morning song. Are you ready? I hope you know it by now and can sing with me. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. We are all here together. No matter the weather, we clap, wave, and say, this is a new day. Maybe we can sing it again and do some jumping. Could you do that with me? Let's try it. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. We are all here together, no matter the weather. Let's jump and we'll say, this is a new day. Thank you so much for singing with me. And let's try to make this a good day, okay? Because we can. We can have a happy face and a great attitude and be helpful. Let's start with our calendar, okay? Let's find out what day it is today. And we start with number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 22. What comes after 22? Yes, a 23. What color should it be to keep our pattern going, boys and girls? Let's start here and see, remind ourselves of our pattern. Blue, yellow, yellow, yellow. Blue, yellow, yellow, yellow. Blue, yellow, yellow. Yes, a yellow comes next. 23 is yellow. What will come after 23? 24. And will it be yellow or blue? You're right. We have a blue, three yellows, and another blue. So let's put 24 on our calendar. We'll just move this over so we can see what comes after 24. Yes, 25. So what should it be? You're right again. It should be a yellow because we have one blue and then how many yellows? Three yellows. So 25. And what comes after 25? 26. And what sh color should it be? A yellow. Yes. And when we get to the end of a row, we go back and start on the left because we always read our numbers and our words are letters from left to right. So this does not go way over here. It goes here. 26. Very good. What comes after 26? Yes, 27. And what color will it be? Blue, yellow, yellow, yellow. Blue, yellow, yellow. Yes, a yellow. 27 is a yellow. And that is today. Today is Monday, April 27. Thank you, boys and girls. Let's say it once more together. Today is Monday, April 27. Very good. Let's sing the days of the week together. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thanks for singing with me. Let's try the months of the year. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Thank you. Good singing out there. I can hear it. Now, let's go on to our pocket chart. And I'm just going to move this just slightly. I hope I don't make it fall down there so we can still see everything. All right, let's try reading our pocket charts. It's a little change, so make sure you're looking at the words to know what they say. I like yellow, red, and brown. Very good reading. I 
and C, purple and white. Very good. I see black menta rays. Oh, we have a new word in there. We are going to talk a little bit about manta rays today. Do you know what a manta ray is? Yes, it's something that lives in the ocean and swims. Let's keep reading, okay? Are you blue and orange? <laughs> I'm not. This is pink. I am green. <laughs> Are you green? I don't think so. Maybe you're wearing green though. I can see. We have another new word, boys and girls. Yes, it starts with a D. D all fins. Dolphins. Very good. We're going to talk a little bit about dolphins and manta rays today and other things that live in the ocean. Are you ready to sing the birthday song with me? The mixed up birthday song? Let's try it, okay? To birthday happy you. Birthday happy, happy birthday to you, you, dear Aubrey Emma, Lachlan, Jasmine. Happy birthday. Day to Gunner, Tristan, Jeremiah. Thank you for singing with me. Let's try our alphabet action song now. Stand that up a little more. All right, we need to get off our chairs if we're still sitting down because I want you to do some jumping and moving, okay, with me? Thank you. And let's begin. With what letter? Yes, A. A A alligator, A A alligator, B B bounce a ball, B B bat a ball, C C cut, C C cut, D D drum, D D drum, E A elephant, E A elephant. Boys and girls, if you didn't realize, this is my trunk, and I'm pretending to be an elephant. E A elephant, E A. Elephant, F -a fly, F -a fly, G -g guitar, G -g guitar, H hop, H hop, I -i itchy, I -i itchy, J -j jump, J -j jump, K -k kick, K -k kick, L lick, L M march, M march, N no, N no, O opera, O opera, peep pop, peep pop, Q qu quiet, Q qu quiet, R er run, R er run, S slide, S slide, T t. Turn, T to turn, U a uh, up, U a uh, up, Viva victory, Viva victory, W uh, wave, W uh, wave, X X X, X X X, Y y uh, yo yo, Y y uh, yo yo, Z z uh, zipper, Z z uh, zipper. Yes, I have a zipper on my my jacket today. I wonder if you're wearing a zipper. All right. We are going to talk about dolphins and manta rays. And what do you think dolphins begins with? Yes, it begins with a D. Let's try drawing a D or writing the letter D. So where do we start our letters? At the top, very good. Where do we start our letters? At the top, top to bottom, write a letter. We get better, better, better if we always start our letters at the top. So D, uppercase D, starts at the top, goes down, and then it has a roundy part, just like that, and sits on the bottom. So we start at the sky, go to 
the ground, and then little d starts near the fence. So lowercase d is like a letter C. Letter C, I call a magic C because, whoa, our little caterpillar came down just when, and caterpillar starts with C, you're right. But we're going to change this C into a D, and that's why I call it a magic C, because it can go into other letters. It can make a lowercase d. We start at the top, and we go down. So we have uppercase D, lowercase d. And what does D read? Yes, d, d, for dolphin, door. Yes, very good, dog. And now let's try making the letter that begins with manta rays. Do you remember what that one is? M. Mm. Yes, an M. Where do we start our letter? At the top. So M starts at the top and goes to the bottom. Then it has a slanted line down. And then we start at the top again and go slanting back to where we began there and then down. Yeah. It's like an upside down W. Mm. M reads M. Mm. Little M has little roundy bumps on it. So it doesn't look exactly like the uppercase. Lowercase has round bumps. D. Mm. Very good. Let's try drawing a dolphin. Let's, let's see if we can. So I'm going to start by making a great big upside down smile and I'm going to make a part like that. That'll be my head and then I will make a little fin here and finish off this part and then I'm going to try making the rest of his tail. It's kind of like a little smile there. Yeah, just a wavy line. It's okay to make mistakes. You know, drawing anything can be difficult. But if you just try, we can do it. And if you don't like what you what you drew, you can. They shouldn't use a pen, uh, a finger to erase. We should use an eraser. Or if you're writing on the magic board, you can use a magic board thing. And I didn't like that one very much, so I'm going to try again. And there's another fin. And then I'm going to give my dolphin a mouth. And yes, he needs an eye. And yeah, eh. maybe make a few bubbles floating up. There's my dolphin. And what does dolphin begin with? He's wagging his tail. So I'm going to put a couple of lines there to make it look like it's moving. D dolphin, yes, it begins with a D. D. So there's my magic C, and then I start at the top and draw a line down. Da, yeah, O, doll, yes, L. And then we have a tricky part. Dolphin, it sounds like dolph, it should be an F, you're right. But for the writing the word dolphin, it's tricky. We put a PH. For the F sound. Sometimes PH, those two letters together read F and F I. What reads I? Yes, I. Dolphin. And what does it end with? An N. Dolphin. Very good. Let's try drawing a manta ray. He's good. Mine's going to be talking to this dolphin. So I'm going to draw kind of like, I don't know, I'll just try this and see if it works out. I'm going to give him two big eyes. And and he, he has two wing-like things. And this one and then he has kind of a long, mine's going to be a curvy tail because I ran out of space on my paper. Is that kind of like a manta ray? He's got these long wing things. Maybe you want to, I don't know, add a little more detail. Sometimes just drawing a few more lines might make it look like it's... Um, 
I'm going to make mine a little happy. So there's his mouth. <laughs> you try a manta ray too. And what does manta start with? Yes, R M up here. M -m -ta -r. It's two words. Yes, the second word starts with R. R Ray. And the A Y together says A. Dolphin manta ray. I hope you will try to draw those. And you could write a sentence about them too. Can I read you some stories today? I have a few of them. And the first one I want to read you is called, yes, Dolphins. And it's written by Melvin and Gilda Berger. Dolphins. And Scholastic publishes it. All right. See if I can keep my fingers away from the words and still hold it up so you can see the pictures. Meet the Dolphins. Dolphins have tails. Dolphins swim about 20 miles an hour. When they're chased, they can swim twice as fast. Dolphins' tails move up and down. Dolphins dive and can hold their breath for as long as eight minutes during a dive. Dolphins can dive down to the sea floor. Dolphins can jump. Dolphins can jump as high as 20 feet into the air. Dolphins jump high above the water. Wow, hey? Dolphins swim in groups. As many as a thousand dolphins swim together, and a group of dolphins is called a herd. Do groups of dolphins follow boats. Dolphin babies are born alive. A baby dolphin called a calf is born in the water. Dolphin babies drink milk from their mother. Dolphins have teeth. A dolphin may have more than 200 teeth. Do you have that many? <laughs> no. And some of you have lost teeth too, haven't you? That's kind of exciting, sometimes scary. Dolphins use teeth to catch food. Is this dolphin smiling? <laughs> Looks like it, doesn't he? Let's try this book. What is it called? Manta Rays. It's also written by Melvin and Gilda Berger and published by Scholastic. Meet the Manta Rays. See, it looks like wings, doesn't it, that they have. Manta rays are dark on the top. Manta rays are white on the bottom. All manta rays have dark marks on their bellies. Manta rays swim. They can easily bend their bodies and make sharp turns. Manta rays have fins like wings. Manta rays jump. They can leap five feet above the water. Wow. And manta rays also follow boats. Manta rays rest. Manta rays hide. They can flap their fins to throw sand on their bodies. So when they're resting, they can hide and be safe. Manta rays are Big. Do you see that swimmer there? The biggest manta rays have wingspans of more than 20 feet. Yeah, that is big. Small fish ride on manta rays. Lots of manta rays swim in warm waters. People dive to see manta rays. But manta rays are not afraid of people. And manta rays are harmless. Does this look like fun? I think I would like to do that. Swim with a manta ray. Would you? <laughs> Let's try this book. This one's called Octopus. And it's also written by Melvin and Gilda Berger, published by Scholastic. Meet the Octopus. 
The octopus has a soft body. The octopus has no bones in its body. It's able to squeeze into small spaces. The octopus has two large eyes. Do you see them there? The octopus has eight arms. If an octopus loses an arm, a new one grows in its place. The octopus uses its arms to move about. The arms catch food. The arms carry food to the mouth. And the octopus eats crabs, clams, and mussels. The octopus can be big. The biggest octopus is more than 20 feet across, so like the manta rays. And the smallest octopus is less than one inch across, just it fit between my fingers. The octopus can be small, so it depends on the kind. The octopus swims. To swim, the octopus shoots out a jet of water, and this pushes it forward. The octopus hides. See the black inky thing it can, it can um, push out of its body so it can hide. The female octopus lays eggs, more than a hundred thousand eggs at a time. The mother octopus cares for her eggs. See the baby octopuses. Do you see them there among the eggs? So interesting. It's wonderful to see all the things or learn about the things that God made. He also made, do you know what that says? Whales. Whales. This is another book by Melvin and Gilda Berger. Whoops. And published by Scholastic. Meet the whale. Whales are very big. This is the biggest whale, the blue whale. It's the biggest animal that ever lived on earth or in the sea. You see its shadow there? Yeah, and there's a boat. Big, very big. Whales breathe in through blow holes. Whales breathe out through blow holes. So this one's breathing out. You can tell because some water comes out too. When a whale dives, it can hold its breath for as long as two hours. Wow. Whales have small eyes. Whales have small ears. It's just a little dent there on the dolphin or porpoise. Whales depend more on hearing than on seeing. A whale can pick up sounds from a thousand, one thousand miles away. Whoa, that's good hearing. Whales have fins. Fins and flippers help the whale swim. Orcas have a six foot tall fin that looks like big black sails. Whales have flippers. That one's jumping. Some whales have teeth. Whales that have teeth eat fish and other sea animals. You can see them there. This whale has one very long tooth. That's called a narwhal. Some whales have baleen. They don't have teeth. The baleen catches tiny sea plants and animals for the whales to eat. And this is the whale's baleen. Whales are great. <laughs> and I have one more story I want to read to you. This one's called Big Al. It's written by Andrew Clements and the pictures were drawn by Yoshi. Big Al. Big Al. In the wide blue sea, there was a very friendly fish named Big Al. You could not find a nicer fish. But Big Al was also very, very scary. Mm. Other fish seemed to have at least one friend. Some had many, but Big Al had none. He did not really blame the other fish. How could he expect little fish to trust a great big fish with eyes and skin and teeth like his? 
So Big Al was lonely and cried big salty tears into the big salty sea. But Big Al really wanted friends, so he worked at it. First, he tried wrapping himself in seaweed. He thought it was a great disguise, but no one else did. Who wants to stop and talk to a floating plant that has big, sharp teeth? Then he thought if he puffed himself up round, the other fish would laugh and see how clever and silly he could be. All they saw was how big he could be, and they steered clear. Very early one morning, Big Al went down to the bottom and flopped and wiggled himself into the sand until he was almost covered up. He looked much smaller. <clears throat> Big Al talked and joked with them and had a delightful time when the other fish came near. But then one scratchy little grain of sand got stuck in his gills and he, and he, he, and he sna, and he sneezed. Achoo! When the clouds of sand cleared away, all the other fish were gone. Big Al even changed his color one day so he could look like he belonged to a school of tiny fish passing by. He bubbled along with them for a while, laughing and feeling like he was just one of the crowd. But he was so big and clumsy that when the tiny fish darted to the left and then quickly turned back to the right, Big Al just plowed straight ahead. He went bumping and thumping right into the little fish before he could even say, Excuse me. He was all alone again, sadder than ever. Poor Big Al. Just then, when Big Al was starting to be sure that he would never have a single friend, something happened. He was floating along sadly, watching some of the smaller fish and was wishing that they would come closer. As he watched, a net dropped down silently from above and in an instant, they were caught. Big Al forgot all about being lonely and he forgot all about being sad. His eyes bulged out bigger and rounder than ever and with a mighty flip of his tail, he opened his mouth and charged straight at the net. The net was strong, but Big Al was stronger. He ripped right through it and all the little fish rushed out through the hole. Yay for Big Al. But when Big Al turned, tried to turn around and got out to get out of the hole, he got tangled up in the net. He was stuck. The net went higher and higher toward the light, bright surface of the sea, and the little fish watched Big Al as he disappeared above them. When the little fish were able to speak again, all they talked about was the huge, wonderful fish that had saved them. How great to be free, but what a shame that the big fellow had been captured. Uh-oh. Just then, there was a tremendous crashing splash above them, and the small fish dashed away. Was it the net again? Not at all. It was Big Al. These fishermen took one look at him and threw him right back into the ocean. And now there was one huge, puffy, scary, fierce looking fish in the sea who has more friends than anyone else. Big Al. I like this story because you know what, boys and girls, even when it's hard, when we find something hard, Big Al found something hard to do was to get friends. But did he quit? Did he quit trying? No, he tried harder than ever. When you're faced with a challenge or something hard, always do your best, okay? You can ask God for help. He will help you. You can ask your parents for help. 
You can ask lots of people for help if you need it, but always try to do hard things. Boys and girls, I hope that you will maybe write your own story today or draw a fish or big owl or a manta ray or a dolphin and write a sentence or two about them. I would love to see what you could do. And thank you again for joining me. Remember, you are important and you are loved very, very, very much. Hope to see you again later. Bye for now.